You're listening to Rise Radio. Rise Radio. So I'm here tonight with Sophie, who has a very powerful testimony. She came from the New Age to faith in Jesus Christ. Hi, Sophie. Hello. Yeah, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And so if you could start by just telling us a bit about your story of where you came from in terms of the New Age and what you were involved with during that time. Yeah, I um, just want to say first, thank you for having me. I was in the New Age for around three years. Um, I've been into astrology longer than than that, but I would say I was really deep in the New Age for about three years. So I had my own tarot deck, which I used, um, and cards would come out, you know. Um, I meditated a lot, but literally like trying to communicate with spirit guides and I, I would do that a lot um open myself up to that and also I was very into like the law of attraction very interested in that and manifesting and stuff like that and what came into that was so like I struggled with anxiety and I did back then but um in the new age like they kind of say to not mention any bad thing you're feeling or like bad thought you have just like focus on the good like if you're feeling anything bad don't draw attention to it because then more of it will come but that's just a recipe for disaster because we all experience those kinds of feelings so I was into that I was like suppressing my emotions I was really big on like angel numbers which aren't actually angel numbers but I was really big um into that and I had an angel number book that had like loads of different number sequences and then it would tell you what your like spirit guides were basically trying to communicate to you or what the universe was trying to communicate to you at that time and I remember one time I was because I was very open I, I opened myself up to all of this so when you open yourself up to all of this it's gonna stuff's gonna happen you're gonna st start to see stuff it's not like there's nothing in it but it's just that it's not good and it's dangerous but you don't know that at the time so you were quite deep into the tarot and the astrology. Were you aware that there was anything dark about it? I know you said that you think it's good, but was there any part of you that thought at the time, mm, there's something not quite right about this? I did think those things, yeah, but not for quite a long time. So because it's all packaged, like it's it's healing and it's and it's helpful and it's of love and it's of light and it's all positive. So for a long time, I just thought it was that it was good and it was fine and there was no danger in it. But I have, I had some experiences where even when I had these experiences, I don't think I thought at the time like, whoa, this is probably because I'm dabbling in all these like spirit guide meditations and opening myself up to tarot like two different entities um, through through the tarot deck. Um, but I had one s instance where, so this is before I was a Christian, obviously, um, and I was dabbling in all of this stuff. I was sitting on my bed and I just felt a really evil presence next to me. And so that really scared me. But even then, I don't think I put two and two together of like, oh, I think it's because I dabble in this stuff. I think it's because I've been opening myself up because I thought it was all good and pure and um yeah I've had some other instances like that one which was that was very scary and I was just confused because I didn't know what that was at the time so you, there was some signs <clears throat> that you saw that you began to think um, maybe there's something a little bit deceptive about these so-called positive spirituality experiences were you able to were you, were you involved with like divination did you think that you could predict the future and uh, with the tarot cards and how much did that consume you yeah so I was really big into like star signs and um calling myself a Pisces and looking at t um like readings regularly because I just wanted to know what was coming in my life next kind of thing um but that can so quickly become an addiction and I would say for me it did because I had a an app on my phone. I had more than one New Age app, but one of the New Age apps I had was basically you just put in your birthday and then it tells you stuff um, that apparently is going to come into your life or tells you stuff about yourself. And I think 
more than one reading I got from that was actually accurate. So when something's accurate and you think it's good, there's no red flags really. So I think it was only once once I became a Christian that I realized about the demonic realm and like how Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and what these experiences really were that I had where I would just be somewhere. I had another experience where um, I was just laying down, like maybe meditating because I meditated so much back then. Um, and I felt a presence like standing up, like right over me. Um, and that was very scary as well. So, but it was only after I became a Christian that I really understood what all of this was. Actually, like the day after, I think it was the day after I became a Christian, I basically started to share about Jesus on my um, Twitter page, just shared about salvation and everything. And then I went to sleep on my sofa and then I woke up and directly opposite me, like near the kind of near the ceiling of my living room, um, I saw a shadow figure um, and it was moving and I was so terrified. I, ne I, I needed to get up for something, but I was too scared to get up. So I just grabbed my phone and played um, worship music and I just stayed there for like two hours because it was so scary. So that was actually the first time that I realized, whoa, the demonic realm is actually real. Yeah. And, and was that like a form of sleep paralysis or, or did you actually see that when you're in normal waking state? I saw it when I was in a normal waking state, like I just woke up from a nap and um, yeah, it was just a shadow figure, not that big, and it was just moving. And that was straight after pretty much I just started to share about Jesus on my social, me social media because before then I would share all the time about like loads of different new age things like tarot and your spirit guides and the universe and all of this stuff. So I completely switched um, and so... I realized then that, you know, something's angry at me that I was communicating with and um, in contact with, basically. Okay, so at that point, you you began to realize that because you had turned against it, potentially, that it was now showing its true colors. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so at what point did you, because you've, you've said that you changed, changed direction, what led you to to get to that point where you um, actually saw that this, you know, this was bad, this was evil, this was demonic, uh, and actually Jesus is the truth? I I think it was a few different things, but, well, the main thing that sticks out in my mind is um, there was a woman I followed on Instagram and she was in the New Age for quite a long time and she was very vocal about the gifts she believed she had at the time, which was like being psychic. And I would just, it really interested me, the videos she'd make and stuff and the things she'd talk about. And then suddenly she changed her Instagram handle to Cassie Redeemed. Um, redeemed because she had had an encounter with God and she got saved and she started to post like Bible verses and just about her experience being saved and so I would say that was a really pivotal thing for me um obviously I wasn't saved then but that was something that I think definitely planted a seed in me yeah okay so one of these new age types actually found salvation found the gospel of Jesus uh, I've actually seen there's there's quite a few isn't there um in recent years on YouTube and Instagram and places of these very similar testimonies that these new ages, these people that were stuck in in that spiritual deception, that they actually have a testimony. They've they've found Jesus through that and and actually packed in all of that old stuff they were doing. Yeah, definitely. Um, Is this a revival of the new ages? <laughs> a revival of the new ages? Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, so that that's so that was a really pivotal part of my interest in Christianity but also I don't remember which came first it may have been like I think it may have started off with her because I followed her and I was aware of what she was about before when she was in the new in the new age and um then she changed and she starts she started to just post bible verses and post about God and share testimony so that was a huge um seed for me that was a huge seed for me that was planted but um also maybe around the same time as this um I just became very open to 
Christianity and yeah, just very open. So I started to look on YouTube at different testimonies, like Christian testimonies, New Age to Jesus testimonies. And I would just binge watch them. Like, I don't even know how many I watched in total because I watched so many. But yeah, so I would just watch loads of these um, and I was becoming more and more hungry, I guess, or just definitely much, much, much more interested in um, Christianity. And so it was actually when I was in the middle of, I don't remember how much of it I watched, but I I watched a, um, I watched someone's testimony on YouTube and then during that, I became so convicted that I'm a sinner and I've fallen short of the glory of God, you know, and I've, I've, I've like hurt him, you know, by sinning so much. And I've just done so many things wrong, um, according to, you know, I mean, I don't know if I'd, I hadn't read much of the Bible then, but yeah, I just, ba based on probably the, some of the Bible that I had read at the time and the people's testimonies I'd watched, I, yeah, it, it's, I was watching someone's video and I just became extremely convicted that I'm a sinner. Like I've done so much wrong and God's seen all of it. And um, so then like I got on my knees and I just apologized for every sin that I'd ever committed um, just because I felt so upset because I knew that I'd upset God. I knew that I'd hurt him, you know, and he's seen all of that. Um, so I just apologized for every sin that I'd ever committed. And I believe, I believe it was from that moment that, um, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. And I know that that savior is Jesus. Like, so yeah, I believe, I believe that's when I got saved. But I also had another, um, experience when watching another testimony where I did kind of an actual, um, prayer that someone had put in their YouTube video of how to get saved. So I don't 100% know which, but definitely the realization that I was a sinner and needed a savior came first, I believe it was, when I was so convicted and apologized for all of the sins I committed. Um, so I may have very well been saved then, but I also said this other prayer as well, just about Jesus and um, asking him to kind of, just basically how to be saved, um, you know, through believing in him. and. So what what was your perspective of Jesus and and Christianity in general when you were a new ager did you, did you did you think that Christianity was some kind of dead boring religion and also in terms of Jesus because I know some new agers have different perspectives of who they think Jesus might be they don't all necessarily deny Jesus exists but they have some kind of um, new age version of Jesus that is not he, he didn't die for our sins but was this some kind of ascended master was that your perspective yeah from what I'd heard of Jesus um, from people that were in the new age was just that yeah he he did a lot of good things I think he did a lot of good things and um, and he's a good example to follow I don't think I ever heard that he died for us and like what he went through for all of us. I don't think I ever heard any of that when I was in like from, from people in the new age, heavily into the new age. So yeah, I would say I probably just thought he, I don't even know if I believed in him then, you know, believed that he was a, he was, he actually was a man and, um, you know, walked on this earth, but I probably just thought, if if I did believe in him, I probably just would have thought what the people around me thought, which was um, that yeah, he was an ascended master, or he he did good things, and he's an example to follow, that kind of thing. But never the gospel. Interesting, yeah. So, what do you think would help other people who are stuck in the new age to? to finally realize that you know that that's a false jesus uh that we are sinners because as far as my understanding of it goes uh in the new age they they don't see that we are sinners per se but they they see that something to do with um a shadow aspect of our being mm, is yeah. that is that the right way to say it yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, do, when you say shadow, do, were you talking about shadow work? Yeah, they they see yeah. that there, there's some kind of shadow 
in their uh, in their views that uh, are within people but they don't go as far as to define that as sin yeah a hundred percent and i did the same thing where you know you're just told that you're so amazing and but it's not even just that you're great it's like so it boosts you up to such an extent where you just you just become like self i don't even very um selfish like self actualization do they call it but but don't the, but the, the weird thing i've always found is it kind of seems to to promote ego the a- ego <clears throat> as in pride and spiritual pride like i am god and all mm-hmm. the and i'm a goddess yeah. but then at the same time it it says oh the ego is bad but it's it's doing two things opposite at once Yeah, there's a lot of contradictions in the New Age, like, a lot. Yeah, they do say that, like, the ego, like, transcend the ego, the ego is nothing. But then, meanwhile, they're saying, like, use these affirmations. Like, I remember at one point, for however long I believed this, I would literally say to myself, like, I would call myself this, I am, it's gross to say it now, but I would say, I am Christ christ consciousness and you may have heard other people in the new age say this and like even like just blasphemous things which you know if you build yourself up that much and you don't see yourself for how you truly are you're just going to become you're going to fall into that um most likely you know where you just start calling yourself a goddess and and all of this stuff and start putting yourself on a pedestal and yeah so what what exactly do they mean by christ consciousness Honestly, I don't even know what I meant when I said it. It's it's so it, it's strange because there's so much in the new age that doesn't make any sense. Um but when I said it about myself, I maybe just thought like, oh, I'm meditating. I'm I'm like getting uh I'm clearing my ch- chakras. I'm unblocking my energy, all those kind of um terms and you just do become very egotistical like it builds you up but not in a good way not in like a edifying way like how we're told to be built up and build others up like christians but in a way of just you're just pouring into yourself in an unhealthy way like you know yeah it, it's it just makes you very uh it makes you just it can i think it can make you think that you're better than other people and that you deserve better treatment because you're this awake awake being and yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so th- there's this whole um, thing when you're talking about chakras. I, I assume you, the, the the goal of that in the new age is to what open the third eye, um, and essentially they think well you can become like God, but they do have some terms for what they would call God. Uh, don't they call him or they don't say him, do they? They say it or they the the source mm-hmm. the source or the the um supreme being do they? energy 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 yeah definitely there's a lot of different new age um like terms for that they use to describe god but obviously that's not god so i used to say um like the universe i used to believe that the universe had so much power and uh you know if if i just align myself then the universe, the universe will bring me things that I want because I'm aligned. It doesn't make any sense because, like, when you become a Christian, you know that like there's no the universe doesn't have any power. It's all God that has all of the power. Um, but yeah, it, so I would say like I would I would I think I would pray to the universe, which doesn't make any sense. So in some ways, it's like elevating the creation above the creator. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And um, yeah, other other terms uh that that are used in the new age is like source, which I use that a lot. Like, make sure you're connected to source. When I'm connected to source, I feel great. It doesn't make any sense. When when you're out of it, you realize like it makes no sense. But when you're in it, it makes sense. You like somehow make it work. Um, so it's like a, an impersonal spirit. What do what do uh, New Agers actually think God is? They they don't think that God is a being, right? I mean, some people in the New Age, I've heard some people in the New Age say Mother God. Some people say like Mother Earth, like worshipping the Earth. So to some people, 
creation, like to some people, the universe, mother nature, that is God to them, I would assume. Yeah, there's a lot of different terms that are used. Do you think that that, that God is actually Lucifer? Oh, um, that's interesting because obviously if you pray to the universe, no one's listening to you. Like no one's listening. But I mean, I don't know if I'd say it's Lucifer, but I'd say the whole, that whole thing, like just the whole new age, it, it's, it's very demonic and it's not how it appears to be because it's packaged as like healing and love and light and everything. And I would say most people or all people that go into it, they are looking for healing and rest and peace, all things that God gives, like, you know, fully. And and if you're in the new age and you're looking for those things, you won't find the peace and the rest and even the joy that you're looking for because God's not there. So it sounds like a load of uh, smoke and mirrors that essentially are just a, a guise or a ruse to draw you into opening yourself up to demons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, 100%. And it's crazy because, like, there are literally Ouija boards for children and they're, you know, they're, like, pink and they 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 probably look appealing to, to young girls. And, like, this is Ouija boards and tarot cards. Like, they are the most dangerous things ever. Like, the fact that they're even, like, you know... Um, Ta I've seen tarot cards, I think, in like bookshops before, and that's anyone can pick that up. A 12 year old, a four year old, a six year old can start getting into that. And it's very scary how it's it, it's becoming like it's not like it's hard to buy these things. It's not really hard to find these things. Um, whereas in the past, if someone wanted to use a Ouija board, you wouldn't be able to just find it in a toy shop or or online so easily. Or if you could find it online, like it wouldn't be targeted to children yeah it's crazy times we're li uh, living in and we were talking about this uh, last week actually we're talking about the uh, pink ouija boards and how it's marketed to young people as if it's some kind of harmless thing and uh, it's yeah crazy it never would have happened i don't think when i was a child 20 30 years ago um it's just getting much worse in the time we're in do you th you mentioned the goddess are you, are you talking when you say about the goddess is there a specific name that they use for that? Is is it? Do you think it relates to the goddess Diana, which was the um, pagan Roman goddess? And I don't want to go too deep into this, but I, I know it's like the moon goddess, which is worshipped in some fashion, right? Yeah, I've I've heard of these things. Um, I've also heard of someone. I watched someone's testimony, uh, and they kind of worshipped Mary Magdalene. So I'm aware that I'm aware of these things. But for me, I, I didn't worship any of these I don't even know what to call them, um, beings. Uh, but I always prayed to my spirit guides and the universe. So that was that was what I that Spirit was. guides. Do you th do you now think that they were literally just demonic spirits? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean when I was a bit younger I went to see a psychic. Um, I think I went twice. Um, and one of the times I went, or maybe I just went once, but some family members went another time and I was brought up that other time. Don't remember which time it was, but basically I was given the information that you're 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 gonna have a spirit guide change. So like, you know, kind of encouraged to like speak to it, you know, to not be afraid of it, basically. I mean, and um and that's just so dangerous because when you pray to anything other than god like you don't know who's like listening you know and we're told obviously as christians like just to pray to the father just to pray to god but when you don't have the knowledge that there is a spiritual war there is a demonic realm it's real and it's dangerous and you shouldn't mess around with it um and couple that with like tarot cards being targeted to children and things like that like it's probably very alluring for people to try and this may sound like a strange question but i've seen these illustrations that have been drawn about these ashtar command um some people call it i think it's connected to the new age but it's these spacey beings that look very beautiful in the illustrations like blonde hair and blue eyes 
and UFOs and New Age universe symbolism. Do you think that this New Age stuff, uh, which we know is really satanic, do you think that this somehow could tie into this alien spacey stuff? Because I do see the connection sometimes between the two. And I'm not someone who believes aliens are real in the sense that they're anything other than a demonic deception, right? Mm. Um, but did did you see any of that kind of alien-looking stuff in the New Age? And do you think that's connected? Um, I don't know if I saw any kind of... I mean, I know that in the New Age, um, some people say that aliens are actually good and nothing to be afraid of. And I followed someone before that would always talk to aliens and she claimed to have been abducted more than once i remember one time this was when i was in the new age i i literally i believe i asked like aliens to like reveal themselves to me or like i'm open to seeing you kind of thing something like that but just for me it was much more like spirit guides and um and uh what's they called who are they called ascended masters uh, archangels those kind of things um yeah so i don't really know a lot about that but what i do know about aliens um in the new age is that some people believe that they are good they are here to help us um and basically we shouldn't be afraid of them if they abduct you it's okay like just crazy 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 things but um yeah yeah and, and as you said about the angels and the angel numbers and this this uh, superstition which comes upon people where they, they start to think, well, if I see this number, that means it's good luck, something's going to happen to me, it's divination, you know, which the Bible obviously speaks strongly against. Mm -hmm. It's a forbidden spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, some of these angels, right, they have the, the they copy the names of the angels in the Bible. They they say, well, I'm, I'm Ar you know, this is Archangel Michael, this is... Um, ah. Gabriel, uh, but they're not. That it's just it's just a counterfeit, right? They're just using those names, maybe to to sound more legitimate. But we know that it it can't be God's true angels. That's so interesting. Yeah, because um, yeah, I mean, doesn't I believe the Bible says that the angels only listen to God? So yeah, I mean, I did a lot of um, meditations and calling on these kind of angels um so yeah i did a lot of meditations to kind of com to kind of i don't even know receipt communicate basically or be in contact with different ascended masters or archangels and i would a lot of the time pray to archangel michael uh yeah and i actually have an experience that i i um want to share at a church that I was at um since becoming a Christian to do with archangel uh an archangel archangels um and I left that church because they were doing things that were not biblical right and that's something I wanted to actually pick up on so it's interesting you mentioned that um just yeah and just on that subject obviously we know that if it's truly God's spirit if it's truly God's angels God's messengers they would only abide by the bible you know the holy spirit the true holy spirit is not going to come and download information to us um that is contradictory to the bible yeah um so that's how we can discern it obviously and you know so there, there's a lot of deception but yeah as you just mentioned um that's uh something i wanted to bring up really because do do you see as someone who came out of the new age do you see that some of these churches are actually engaging in new age practices and calling it christianity 100 percent. so the first church i went to bearing in mind like this church i was just so excited to get plugged into a church and um, probably most believers are or probably a lot of believers are after they get saved they just want to fellowship with other christians and learn more and be edified and everything um but so i didn't go into this first church finding my first church with just you know intentions of okay it's going to be for fellowship and it's going to be good I'll learn more of the word and everything I really wanted a church that was aware of the stuff that I'd learned in 2020 um that had gone on so um yeah so I went to this church and 
at first, I don't think there were any red flags. People were friendly and welcoming. But then after some time, I realized in their services, they would call on archangels and they would kind of sit down on the floor as though, wow, yes, glory, like, like amazing. Like, oh, almost like making an idol out of angels, which we shouldn't do. And it felt very weird. And every time they would call on archangels, I just had a horrible feeling in me, like a disgusting feeling because it's, I mean, I believe that was the Holy Spirit warning me, like warning me that this, this isn't biblical, what's happening here. Um, and obviously I also had experience with calling on these things from being in the new age. So it was very, very strange, but I had that disgusting feeling every time they would do it. And one time, um, I stayed after the service and I went to speak to the pastor because he said, basically, if anyone wants prayer, you can come up. And I did. Um, and once he'd finished praying for me, he, uh, he called on, I don't remember which one it was. It might have been Archangel Gabriel. I think it was Archangel Gabriel. He called He called on him and um, said, just be with Sophie, just protect her. And I felt so gross after that. And then when I left, I was just apologizing to God for like basically that that had happened. I didn't know it would happen. I didn't know he'd do that, but it just I just felt like, ugh, that's disgusting. And I think I said like, please like get rid of anything that's not of you that's near me. Um, so did you see see them using any other practices that you were familiar with in the New Age, like the positive confession, law of attraction? They did speak a lot about kind of Christians and how you can have demons and how Christians can be possessed by demons, which I just don't believe at all because we we have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can't, the Holy Spirit and a demon can't, exist in the same place that just makes no sense um and i believe the bible speaks against that i don't know if i saw anything that was very new agey other than what i just described but um i did feel like there was kind of a hierarchy at this church like if you weren't doing certain things and maybe it wasn't intentional on their part but i felt like if you weren't doing certain things that other christians were doing um, then you were seen as less than. That's just how I felt. But I mean, it might have not been to do with that church. Um, it might have just been me. But yeah, I mean, I just felt like I was seen as less than. Well, some of them claim to be apostles, don't they? Yeah, um, they do. And this church I'm talking about, they sometimes had apostles come in and like speak and everything. Also, they would preach things that I just believe the Bible speaks completely against, like... I think someone was preaching one time there and she said something like, if you're sick, um, if you're sick, it's because you didn't have enough faith. And I hate that so much. I hate that so, 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 so much because like, I know that God wouldn't be upset with any of us if we're struggling, whether, or if we're ill, if we get sick, like if anything, you, you need to be reminded that he's an ever present help in those times in an, all of the time um and there's no shame about these things you know whether it be mental health things or mental health struggles or physical issues like god's always for you doesn't matter what you're feeling yeah and, and it's it's just like the prosperity gospel in america isn't it where they they basically say that if you if you have a disease if you struggle if you are not rich financially and all these different things that you don't have enough faith and um, they basically take suffering out of the equation of the Christian life and how God can use suffering and he and He has used suffering all through the Bible. You know, none of those people that were used majorly had no problems. They, they, um, they, they suffered in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Like that wasn't spoke about at that church. Like, I mean, a lot of Christians believe this, that, you know, if you're struggling with anything from like depression or anxiety or physical ailments, then it's your fault. Basically, it's your fault. You, you got yourself here, essentially. And that is just not, that is not the truth at all. Or that it's all only de demons. Some Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Like, it just makes no sense at all. Like, do I think that demons can influence, like can speak to us and things? Yeah, because I think I've experienced that. But um and I definitely believe demons can possess non-believers and, you know, they can influence Christians, definitely. But 
to just say that every single time someone struggles with their mental health or with a physical illness, that it's a demon, that's ignorant. Yes, this hyper spiritualization as well, isn't it? It's like blaming everything, even our sins, on demons. So we, you know, we, I find that you can end up not taking responsibility for those cho bad choices and repenting of them and and wanting to be rid of them. Um, instead, you know, you blame it all on a demon. It it means that actually it's counterproductive, stopping us from addressing the actual points that need to be addressed, so that we can begin to be free yeah truly free that's true yeah and i saw that in this church that i went to the first church i ever went to um there was just such a it there was there was they spoke a lot about demons and um i i had that thought as well like well if if you just blame everything on a demon ev not everything can be a demon and if you just blame everything on a demon like where's your accountability for yourself where's your acknowledgement of like um you know if you fall short like just being like, oh, well, I need to have a demon cast out of me again. No, it's not. Yeah, and, and, and on the other hand, it's not to say that the enemy can't use certain things to try and draw us away in the wrong path. Mm. Um, and it says, obviously, in the Bible that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And also, with my own struggles with mental health at times, I have seen that even though these things can be completely organic because obviously our mind, our brain is fallen, subject to disease. Uh, so it can be a, I would say, a genetic thing, um, something that's been formed through bad experiences mm. socially and parentally and all these different things, yeah. trauma. Yeah. Um, but I, actually I've seen that sometimes the enemy can, can also play on that, mm. not in, internally, mm. but externally to to try and torture you and to discourage you and to set you on the wrong path definitely i definitely agree with that yeah yeah um i mean by no means am i saying like if you're a christian then that you're never going to experience any like spiritual warfare you absolutely will the bible says that we will but um the 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 thing is is christians just can't be possessed by demons but i yeah i definitely i believe i've had experiences with that as well where i've been really low emotionally and um i believe the enemy like used that to his advantage because it's much easier to it's much easier for him to get to us when we're weaker so yeah absolutely yeah um yeah my my problem comes when people start trying to cast something out mm -hmm. uh because the, if as you said if you have the holy spirit he doesn't share a vessel. So there's no demon inside a Christian. That's just completely contradictory to to the, the Bible, in my opinion. So and, and of course you've got this whole thing where um these deliverance ministers can think they're like a an apostle. Mm. It becomes very cultish that you you know, you have to keep going back to the the so called this so called deliverance minister and you become completely controlled and beholden to them. Yeah. So there's a lot of dangers there, and I'm, I'm glad that you've seen that. That's amazing. Um, how long have you been a Christian? I think it was either 2021 or 2022. I think it was 2022. Uh, it might have just been at the end of 2021, start of 2022 kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, so a few years. Okay, so, yeah, you, you've seen that quite quickly. I mean, you know, some people that takes a lifetime to begin to wrestle with those things so it's amazing how god has been guiding you um evidently mm -hmm. just uh i just want to touch on be before we finish just explain to us how you experience salvation in jesus and and maybe a message for other people that are stuck in these deceptions of the new age uh, how they might find him too and, and what what does the gospel mean yeah, that's, those are really good questions. So um, for me, like I mentioned earlier, um, how I got saved, uh, before being saved, I was open to Christianity. I was open to God. And because what I was in and the things I was doing, they weren't bringing me what I was looking for, like what they had promised, you know, like healing and peace and um, just a sense of security as well. There's so much that I think people are looking for where you know to where they look to the new age for those things but 
you won't find them there. And there's sometimes illusions when you're in the new age. For example, like I wanted to mention this earlier, but when I was into the, all the angel number sequences and everything, I was once out, and I, I this is not just a one-time thing, like this happened more than once, but I was out somewhere um, and yeah, I was out with my dad and um, I was very open to all of this. So I was very, very open. Um, and we were near a car park and I saw on one car 888 and then another car near it, 888. And then I think a third one maybe as well, 888. So, and and I just got all excited and I told my dad, like, look, like, you can experience this as well. Like, how cool is this? Like, you know, spirit guides are communicating with me. Like, this means something kind of thing. Like, so excited, like, thinking that it meant something so good and, like, amazing. You don't realise until, I think a lot, for a lot of people, you don't realise until you're out of it what it really is. Um, and how it's really dark and how, you know, Satan appears as an angel of light. Like, all of this in the New Age... Even if you think it's like, oh, it looks harmless. Oh, this is fine. I'll only do it sometimes. Like you're you're messing with things that you don't have knowledge about. You know, you don't know what the consequences are going to be for you de- for you dabbling in the, all of this stuff. And also, it's going to affect your peace of mind. Like, I think that's a huge thing that people look for when they're going into the new ages piece. But you're just constantly chasing it. It's the next thing. Like I, I even had an app on my phone where I could just pay money for a psychic. I spent around 300 pounds. This wasn't even my money, my parents' money, because I just felt like I needed to keep doing this um, on psychic readings just to get assurance and to hear about my future and all of this. But like once you know who is in control and like the fact that, you know, you're, you, you were made for a reason, like, you you have a creator. Like, you don't need any of that stuff. You have no interest in any of that stuff. And you don't even have interest necessarily in, like, knowing what the next day is going to consist of because you trust the one who is holding you in the palm of his hand and your life. Yeah, and a lot of it's counterfeits, isn't it? We see the devil masquerades as an angel of light mm-hmm. and numerology there is a a true biblical sense it's got to be in context and it's got to be um you have to be careful Mm -hmm. but obviously we know that god uses signs and seasons and the real deal is in the bible Mm -hmm. and the problem is is gnostics and and these new age things they they pervert these things and take these things and they they twist them um and it basically becomes a rebellious act spiritually and that's the essence of witchcraft isn't it so yeah it's it's just all counterfeits of the real thing and and i noticed in the new age that they actually have a lot of counterfeits like a rebirth born again it's mm. a counterfeit mm. um eternal life reincarnation counterfeit mm. um the spirit all these different things so yeah the, it's just uh smoke and mirrors as we said earlier and it's it's just a farce but mm. Can you just in a, in the last couple of minutes just explain very briefly to someone who may be listening who is interested in how to be saved? Can you just explain that very quickly before we finish? Yeah, of course. Um, so the gospel is literally so simple. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The key is being open because if you're so tied up in the new age, and you know it can be you can have all these can all these um false assumptions about christianity but it's so not what people have said it is you know like if it's this dull thing and oh they're not they're not spiritual all of those things are lies um the new age is is the lie and so if you if you believe in jesus you know that he walked on this earth um, that he died for, for me, you, and all of us, um, you know, was crucified on the cross. He, you know, yeah, he was crucified on the cross. He died. And then he was rose from the grave on the third day. You put your faith in him and you have the assurance that you will be saved, sealed with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And I promise you that anything you're searching for in the new age you looking in the new age for that stuff, anything you're dabbling in, in the new age, none of that comes even slightly close to the peace and the hope and the joy and the contentment and the fulfillment that is found in 
the Lord in God, in Jesus. Thank you. And it's a, a really inspiring testimony and story to see how that you you were so deep into that stuff and and opening yourself up to dangerous demonic deceptions even and you were brought out of that by Jesus mm -hmm. and brought to faith in him and saved so I think it's encouraging for anyone who's watching this that no matter how far you've gone no matter how far you've sinned gone the wrong way you it's never too late while you're still breathing you can be saved by Jesus Absolutely. So, thank you very much thank you Thank you, Sophie. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you tonight. And uh, thanks for coming on to Rise Radio. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure your testimony will help many others. Thank you. To God be the glory.